Okay, Chris, I'm gonna go fast so this video isn't too long. All right, so you probably know this, but this end of the cross feed or cross slide um, shaft is, is, um, is just a coaxial hollow tube with a key on the inside. So here's, I, I got my old uh, lead screw here. So this end of the lead screw is not anchored at all on this end. So you can see they just have a keyway cut. And uh, this, all the, the only thing this does is turn the shaft via a coaxial tube that goes over with a key in there. Um, the anchoring of the lead screw is back here in the taper attachment. <clears throat> all right, so I'll come around the other side. I'll take this extension <clears throat> piece off in a minute so we get a better look. But the um, when you adjust, you know, from the normal crank for the cross feed, there's what happens, okay? So this is loose, just slides back and forth. If you run this down and clamp it and try to adjust your um, cross feed, it will not adjust, okay? it's locked into the taper attachment. Okay. Um, it's also tracking the taper attachment even when it's not locked. And let me take the cover off and show you how that works. Okay, here's a better view. So the lead screw is anchored here in the taper attachment. It's anchored into this tube. So we got a thrust washer and nut on this side. There's a little flange and there's another thrust washer underneath there. Well, maybe not, it may, it may just ride right on the, uh, on the tube, okay? So then this, this tube, see if I can find, find where I'm pointing. This tube is anchored to this post. There's a little cross pin right here that just catches the top of this tube to keep it anchored. So then this, this vertical boss here is anchored to this block, which is anchored to the dovetail slide, which underneath, well, it's hard to see, but anyways, underneath, um, actually no, it's just, it's just anchored to the dovetail slide which is then has another dovetail in the main bracket down here, okay? So everything anchors back here. So when you adjust your cross feed, you can see it's moving a little bit because I have the taper attachment loose. But So anyways, the taper attachment can move that whole tube. It just floats in there, okay? So yeah, as you're, as you're tracking with your cut in and out, it just moves the whole thing back and forth, okay? Now you can see the other end where that, where that uh, flange is there, okay? Um, the, um, the top piece here, okay, let me talk about that for just a second. You probably know this, but just, to, just so you got it. So what the beauty of this is when you're using your taper attachment, when you're first, first getting everything set up, you don't, you leave this loose, okay? So you can get it all set up and then you can you can adjust because you can use both feeds <laughs> you can adjust where you want to start your cut and so forth and then once you've got everything dialed in and you don't want it to move that's when you crank this down and bind everything together and and then it's completely locked in but it'll still track even with it loose which is really pretty neat okay uh let's see so uh, let me give you a uh, look from the bottom here. All right, so underneath, and this is what Everett made for you. So you have a block, but this is the, the uh, dovetail is just cut into the main bracket. So this just runs in parallel with with the lathe bed. So it doesn't swivel, it's just, it's just the tracking, okay? And then your two plates, they've got a center pivot, Okay, that's what you're building right now. And the top one has its own dovetail. And then this guide block or anchor block has the, uh, um, the mating dovetail. So when you, you know, when you're in the setup for a taper and you're traveling along, that guide block changes your anchor point. 
and it just moves back and forth, okay? And then this is the simple part. So on this end, we just have, and I, I, I would just keep it loose, but when you're gonna use your taper attachment, when you figure out, you know, where you're running on your bed, you know, where you wanna be, then you, this just clamps on, well, it goes all the way around the other way, clamps on to your lathe bed and, and locks the whole uh, slide mechanism in place. And you just have a little nut here to, to lock it, okay? They give you two holes on the end here, so you just you can just move that retaining bolt, you know, depending on which way you want to swing the uh, uh, your taper um, in, in degrees, taper in degrees, and then the other side, if I can get around over here. Oh, there we go. Taper in inches. Okay. So this upper plate has a pivot between the two plates, very similar to what you're doing. Um, it's just a pin in this case. I think it's just a dowel pin, like a, I think this cross piece here, I'm going to call it a trunnion. It just floats in here. It's not solidly attached in any manner. It just, it can't go anywhere. So it just kind of floats in there, you know, into, into a nice fitting hole that goes into the, uh, this double dovetail block. There's a couple of oil holes up here that allow oil to go through and lubricate both the inside and the outside of this tube. Did I mention there's a guy on eBay that used to sell these lead screws? So this is the same lead screw as a nine inch South Bend with a taper attachment. This one's a heavy 10, but it still uses the same lead screw. Um, I tried to buy a genuine South Bend from Grizzly when I did the rebuild on this lathe. And they only sell it as a kit. It's a newer version that uses thrust, you know, roller ball bearing, thrust bearings on each end. It takes a different tube that goes down in there. And I don't remember whether it came with a nut or not, but they, they just, they only wanted um, about $600. <laughs> So I got this one on eBay, of course, it was a few years ago. I think it was like 120 bucks, including the nut. All right, so here it is in action. I got a clamp down there. We got quite a bit of taper dialed in. And if we move the carriage back and forth, we can see the cross slide moving following the taper attachment. And I have this loose, okay? So let's... Like I said before, what's really cool about this, you can leave that loose, you can dial in, you can, you can use both the crank and the taper attachment at the same time. But then when you're dialed in and you really got it set where you don't want anything to move, you can lock it down here, boom. That way you, you don't have to worry about accidentally bumping the dial here and changing something. So it's really a slick uh, design. One, there it is with it locked in, okay. All right, I'm going to send you a few stills. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if you need anything else. I can, I can take measurements, whatever you need.